Hello, my name is Dave Kendall. I'm a comic illustrator for 2000 AD. I work on the Fall of Edwards series written by uh, Keck W. This is just a small tour around my studio. This area here, as we pull out, is my computer area. It's packed full of toys and anatomy models, female, male, skeletons. This bottom monitor is my Cintiq. On this device you can draw and paint as we come round. A second monitor for colour balance. Printers, scanners. Many, many, many books. Books on comics, anatomy, history, photography, photojournalism, fine art. A planning chest full of old artwork, pencils an easel for painting. We have a graphic novel section which is getting bigger and bigger as the mega collection grows. And the traditional drawing area where I paint and draw when I'm not working on the computer. And sometimes I might get a chance to sit on my settee which is not very often. So this, this is my studio, this is where I work. I probably spend 80% of my waking life here so this is it. In this short video I'm just going, to, just going to show you my software I use to produce a comic page. Starting off my desktop, this is uh, probably my favourite piece of Dark Judge artwork by Brian Bolland. It features the first appearances of Fear, Fire and Mortis. For me this sums up the Dark Judges in every aspect. They're dark, ruthless, cunning, cold and really they should never ever go below this image. So I, I keep this up here as a reminder of, of what, what I have to try and achieve at least in terms of atmosphere and in feel. So anyway, um, go to my first bit of software. It's a piece of software called Mischief. This is where I produce my thumbnails. They're very very rough but in some ways this is the most important stage. It's at this stage that I work out exactly how the story is going to pan out over the five pages. Not brilliant drawing, very rough, very quick. Let's remove that a minute. Um, but the layouts are there, and usually these layouts don't change right up to the finished article. Uh, and what we'll do, I'll take you through page one as a starter. The great thing about Mischief is it has an infinite canvas, so I can do little doodles over here of page layouts. I can work out positionings of faces or angles of bodies. I can manipulate these, I can reduce them in size, I can add limited amounts of shading or shadow. I can basically do a pretty good job of thumbnailing out a, a strip. I can do doodles over here and bring them in, enlarge them, drag them into this page layout. It's a very versatile little bit of uh, sketching software. So that's what I use to produce these thumbnails. The next stage with thumbnails would be um, Manga Studio. I then take the thumbnails produced in Mischief into Manga Studio and draw it up to a much greater degree. I use Manga Studio as opposed to Photoshop because it's got such great drawing tools. It's, it really is quite stunning. It's got incredible perspective tools. You've got concentric circles, you've got ways to make shapes. It's just a, a really powerful piece of software in terms of drawing. I still enjoy using Photoshop as a, as a painting or rendering tool but it's at this stage that I really nail down the page. This will be printed as a blue line which I will then pencil traditionally because I quite enjoy that process. So I will then, as you can see, this is page one. I've gone on from my initial uh, sketch, although if, you're, if I just go back to Mischief, you can still see that this retains, the, the Manga Studio still retains the essence of the initial sketch. My next stage is penciling. So we now have a page which has been printed onto Bristol board and then penciled. A lot more detail. If I go back a bit. Hang on. As you can see, there's lots more little bits of texture, extra detail. The architecture is correct. There's lighting, there's props. 
the final designs are established and it's from this stage that we will then take this scan the page in and then produce the final page in Photoshop I just enjoy the brushes Photoshop has um, I only probably only use a, a small number of brushes to get the effects I want but for me this is a fun part rather than the hard work of uh, planning the page this is this is the reward at the end of uh, all the technical stuff so I, I really enjoy doing this painted and rendering stage which I'll show you later on and that is effectively my um, workflow and the next stage will be showing you how I render an actual panel thank you so I'm looking at um, painting this small panel here so I'm going to um, zoom in a little bit I'm not going to concentrate on the background because that would take too long to show you but I'll show you the, my process here so you have some idea of what I'm up to um, this layer here is on something called multiply which actually makes the, the pencil transparent so anything which is lighter um, you can see through so I'll show you what happens I'll lock that layer so we can only paint on what's actually on the layer so using a basic brush, this is one of my favourite brushes, just a hexagonal brush I'm thinking about the colouring now, the lighting um, it's a nighttime scene so I basically start off with a sort of grey tones, blue tones I'm trying to keep the colour down although her eyes are glowing so I'm going to apply some colour there her eyes are sort of cut out so they they'll have, they'll have a slightly raw feel to them apply a little bit of warmth, a little bit of purple thinking about shadows at the moment this is very sort of blocky just blocking it in I suppose she has a similar sort of feel to some of the sort of vampire sort of Nosferatu feels, uh, films and uh, monsters typically bald headed these eyes are sort of opening in her head so we'll stick a little bit of It starts off quite rough and ready to start off with. It's not. Um, I'm not going for heavy refinement at the moment. A little bit of colour on the nose. Don't want to make it too red or too too pink. Maybe a little bit of colours in the lips as well. A little bit of darkness. So what I'm doing, as you can see, I'm working underneath the pencils at the moment, so that's a separate layer. I'm not actually touching it either, I'm not going to be covering the pencils for a while until I've actually got this established how I want it. So, shadows from the hand, shadows from the fingers coming down. I want to concentrate most of the highlights in this area up here. Right. Drag some of the lighter colour from our forehead onto the fingers. With this eyedropper tool I'm just dragging some colour in from the main body of the image just to keep it consistent. Just a little bit of lightness on our lids. Continue that sort of raw spread from her sort of bloody eyes down onto her cheeks. 
she sees more with her mind than she does with her eyes but um, I quite like the idea that she's got these strange little inhuman eyes shoved into her forehead It's like Cenobite feel, I suppose, from Hellraiser. Soften up some of the edges. If the light's coming down from the top, I'm going to apply a bit of shadow here where the the forehead dips into the dips into the bridge of the nose. a little bit of highlight. All the time I'm thinking where is the light falling? Where is it being obscured? Where is it being shaded? I swish off the pencils every now and again to see how it's progressing. Because if it starts looking pretty good without the pencils um, I know I'm getting close to what I want. Oops. Great thing about doing digital work, you can just undo any problems you get. Now what I tend to do, which is quite interesting, I sometimes create another layer, fill it with a you know, a different colour, and apply, I call it colour burn, which tends to push some of the colours into different realms. It gives it quite an interesting you can give can throw out some very interesting colour schemes which you wouldn't necessarily design or even realise that you could have. So yeah, I quite like the spookiness of that, it's, it's looking pretty good. So, yeah, a little bit more work with the lips I think. I'll, I think I'll lower that and flatten that, so I've committed to that colour scheme now. Just put a little bit of under lighting on the nose, a little bit of bounce light just coming off. I'm just going to she's got a sort of wry smile on her face because she's looking into Fairfax's mind, seeing what a mess he is because of the his training and his his upbringing and what's happened to him, his contact with Sydney. Still going to put a little bit more light there. Don't make that chin too obvious. What I don't want to do is have too much attention brought to the bottom of this picture. I want most of the focus to be on her eyes and these sort of pseudo eyes in her head. Okay. It's about this point I reached a point where I can actually flatten the, the pencils down onto the painted layer and then really start refining it. Add a little bit more. A few more highlights. Oops. Okay, it's looking all right. Just quickly check. And slightly a red a bit of warmth in her lips. Maybe make that shadow a little less extreme.
I get less bold as I get closer to a sort of finish. You know, strokes should start off quite broad and and brash, and then you refine it down and down and down until you you end up with a nicely, hopefully rendered piece of work. But hopefully retaining the sort of colour choices you made when you were just slapping the colour down. I mean, this is more or less how it would probably work traditionally if I was painting this. It would be layer, layers of colour and then refining over the top. But this is an awful lot faster. And slightly more forgiving. Especially when you're drawing a comic strip, it takes time to to get this done. Okay, I'm getting closer to where I want to be. It's quite spooky looking. It'd be a good end of um, end of episode. Okay, as you can see, that's looking. The forms are pretty good. It's it's it has that sense of uh, three dimensions, even without the even without the, the pencils on top, providing detail. You've got a sense there of, of what you're looking at. Sometimes I'll just work into this area to give it a sense of excellent. Yep, that's perfect. Although I do want to sort of darken up, take some of that colour into here and into here. Maybe some slight hints of shadow on the knuckles and the nails. She's missing a nail there, so I'll just swap a little bit of nail on there. Okay, that I'm happy with, so I will flatten that. So that is now one one layer. I'll also save it because that's the worst thing about digital is if you don't save it and your your program crashes. And now I'll just take you quickly through a little bit of rendering. I probably won't render the entire face. I'll save that for when you see the comic. But um, I'll start working on the nose and the eyes and try and work out what I'm doing here. So I tend to I got a lot of brushes here, but I only tend to use. Um, three or four for ninety percent of the time. Some of, some of these come in to play, but um, most of the time it's only three or four brushes. This is one of my favourites. It's a hard elliptical. It's particularly good for doing sort of creatures with slightly unsmooth. So very carefully, I start rendering some highlights just to see how it pans out. So in my head I'm thinking, how is this light hitting her forehead? What type of blemishes is it hitting? Has she got any veins that I have to paint in? Let's some work on this eye and make it nice and spooky. A little hint of red. So I saw a program on a cow being birthed on uh, television tonight. So that's probably going to inform me a little bit about how this cut looks. <laughs> Just take whatever you see and, and use it. So I might give a slightly a sort of slightly goat's eye. Sort of demonic goat eye look. Get a sense of this sort of split and cut, and it's not actually, it's not a perfect lid, it's some sort of makeshift slice thing, which isn't. It's not perfectly uh, functional. It's almost like she's done herself. 
exactly where she's got the eyes from, I don't really know. But um, who knows what dead fluids does to you? As you can see, that's become, became, become that's becoming quite uh, defined. I don't tend to zoom in too much because I'm, I'm thinking about what it's going to look like at print size. If I go in too far, I'll be adding details that I'll never ever see again. So even now, this is bigger than than page size. So it's always had a little bit of vein. I don't know. Something tells me it's going to have a little bit of vein poking out there. So I think of veins like little ridges on the skin, casting their own shadow. So they'll be catching the light. But they're not they're not sort of ropes. I mean a lot of people make the mistake of putting ropes as veins and they're highly defined, they've got sort of black edges. I mean that's never gonna happen unless you know, unless it's a bodybuilder type effect. And even then it will just be another defined ridge rather than a, a rope laid on the skin. It's important you sort of show that it's poking out of the skin rather than laying on the skin. It takes a little bit of time of rendering but you know the effects are worth it. You'll find I, I, I sort of switch around and touch up little things as I see it. and I'm drawing most of the colour from the actual stuff I've already laid down so I'm not actually choosing much colour from uh, the colour picker down here I'm actually just taking it directly from the stuff I've already laid down which is uh, quite helpful so yeah that's looking okay I'm going to keep her sinister look now. I may want to give this a little slight, her eyes a slightly raw edge. So, what I'll do is I'll grab a, a hint of red, drag it around. By using some of this blue as well as, as part of the highlight, that will really accentuate that red because you're using a, a contrasting colour. Decide where the, where the actual highlight is and place it. The highlight on this lid will only appear bright at one point. So yeah, I mean, that gives you an idea of how I would render up a, a panel. This is the same process I'd use for a big panel like this one, which I'll be doing next, but I probably won't be filming that. Um, So you know, I'm mixing some warm highlights in among the blue. It, it just adds some extra interest. You know, if you look at a human face, it's rarely one colour. There's blues and there's pinks and there's all sorts of things. Oranges, if you're Donald Trump. Um, So there you go. Well, hopefully that shows you enough of how I go about painting something. I will continue with this and probably spend another hour or so um, rendering this up, but this is in real time, so it gives you an idea of how fast I can work on some of the simpler panels. I'm trying to avoid a, um, a cliched, leering joker smile. I want something a little bit more enigmatic for, for this panel. So she's not leering all over the place. She's, uh, she's got a very sort of slight knowing smile to say, I know what you are, Fairfax. I know you're a mess. So there we go. 
hope this has proved to be useful to you. It's very difficult to paint and to try and explain what you're doing as you do it. Usually I'm working in silence or I've got an audio book or raging music going on. So uh, trying to actually put my own thoughts into into words as I work is it's not the easiest thing. Probably gets better with practice, but I don't get enough of it. So yeah, so there you go. You get an idea of how how I render something out. This will become more refined as time goes on. All this will come into into focus. The, the fingers will be done, but really that gives you an idea of how I go about doing it. Okay, I hope that's useful.